And if you're new here, hi, thanks for joining. So I've been having a bit of a struggle with drawing lately. You know, sometimes it just gets that way. Here's a little drawing that I did last year around the same time as the lockdown where I was feeling in a similar fashion. So maybe it's not just me. <laughs> I was thinking of turning this into a t-shirt for myself for those days maybe it would just uh cheer me up a bit <laughs> i decided to take my own advice and go through my old drawings well not necessarily so old but just the drawers full of doodles and sketches that i have laying about in my little studio I was looking for something that I could rework or complete or just bring to a little bit more of a finish because my imagination muscle is a little weak right now and I'm not really able to come up with new ideas and so I thought maybe i don't have to maybe i can just um, find something that i've done in the past and um yeah complete it so i'm sure i'm not alone in this uh i'm sure a lot of you have had a similar moment where you're kind of feeling in a bit of a funk and um you know you go up to bat a few times and you strike out and then you just get nervous. I don't know why I'm thinking of a sports analogy here, but it just seemed fitting. And um, by up to bat, I mean stepping up to the open, empty sketchbook page. And um, yeah, so I've been trying to draw and everything comes out ugly. <laughs> and then it's just disheartening and frustrating and I know that the way about it is often that you just have to keep drawing and keep drawing through that funk and maybe two hours later you um, warm up and then you can draw again but um but I think I figured out a different way so I thought I'd share this idea with you in case you're also looking for a way out of funk. So sorting through my drawers, I pulled out a couple of drawings that I thought I might want to work on. And I settled on this little mouse reading to his animal friends. <laughs> little illustration. Um, I chose it because it um, had a really graphic quality and I wanted to work in gouache. But I was also really nervous to work in gouache. I mean, it's something that I really want to get better at, but I... I haven't done regularly so I've been struggling with because 
um, I keep coming at it like watercolor and it's totally a different thing and I'm just having um, a bit of an issue jumping back and forth between those two mediums. Although they're very similar, you know, it's like a, it's a water, it's a water issue. And, um, and so that was another thing that was making me nervous. So I decided to um, kind of cheat my wash experience a little bit. It's not really cheating, but um, I pulled out my Sakura Koi palette, which I haven't used in a while, which is a great little palette and I really like, like it a lot. I like the colors, they're very um, happy. <laughs> I don't know, that's like my word for it, but they're very kind of it's like a cheery sort of color combination. Um, and I had done a few illustrations using the Sakura Koi and um, white gouache a couple of Christmases ago. And I really liked the way that they work together. So I thought I would try that again. So I'm kind of using gouache. I'm using watercolor as gouache by mixing it with white gouache. If you do have that Sakura set, I would encourage you to try that combo and see if you like it too. Um, I think it's pretty cool. So I found a way to get a little gouache, but in a way that I felt comfortable with. I pulled out my light table for this to transfer the sketch onto the watercolor paper and I was about to do that and noticed that um, the pencil lines were too light to get through the thickness of the watercolor paper because watercolor paper, if you don't know, is quite a lot thicker. And so I had to do a little quick line art tracing with a pen in order to get um, a line that could read through the watercolor paper. So I often either do that or I'll take a photo of the sketch and then do the line art on my iPad or something if I need to do more refining and then print it out and then I have a black line. So either or it works. I mean, um, I just do the iPad version when I need to figure out more, like when the sketch is, needs more development. I actually really liked the way this little quick uh, pen line um, drawing turned out, so I might try to do a more finished version of that, maybe with watercolor or do a digital color with just this kind of sketchy pen. I think it turned out pretty cute. was watching a new um, channel the other day and it was a great channel. I totally forget the name of it but I'm going to put it down in the description below. It's the artist's name, I think her name is Mary but I'm going to look it up and put it down in the description box. Anyhow, she has a lot of um, gouache videos and uh, I was binging through a few of them the other night and she mentioned this technique of doing like a ground painting or an underpainting and it was basically like getting a color down on the paper before you start layering with gouache that way that when you um, start painting it sort of forces you to go opaque because you need to cover that color but alternatively, you can also just let that color peek through and it looks nicer than the white of the page. It's almost like the opposite of with watercolor where you want to have the white of the page come through. Um, with gouache, it almost looks untidy when the white of the page comes through. I don't know if that untidy is the right word, but something's kind of off. So having like a ground color behind the painting actually really unifies 
the painting and gives kind of a little bit of interest when that ground color pops through. I had seen um, James Gurney, who also has an awesome channel and great tutorials online, and I'll also put his links in the description box. He almost always does that when he goes out and does painting and um, I don't know, I never clicked and realized uh, that he was doing that all the time. Anyhow, um, so I thought I would try that and I didn't use the watercolors for that process because these are Japanese colors. Now, I don't know this for certain, but it's something that I suspect that um, Japanese watercolors are very liftable. And perhaps that's not true, but uh, as far as the Sakura Koi set goes, they are. They're very grainy and they're very liftable. So um, I didn't want to set down the ground with those watercolors because um, once I got to painting, they would definitely lift up. I just, I just know how this paint reacts. So I wanted something that was going to be um, much flatter and more absorbed and kind of more staining. So I just happened to have this little um, Daniel Smith palette on my desk and I pulled it out and used a couple of colors from there. I think like a burnt sienna maybe and a yellow. I'm not sure, you know, some like pinky yellow things. Um, I don't think I went dark enough with it to get the kind of effect that I was looking for, but it was a good first attempt. And now I know what I was trying to do and how to do it better. <laughs> I started painting I decided to do a couple of little tiny and super quick thumbnails to like decide on color I'm trying to just be better at color and trying not to like put too many colors into a, a drawing or an illustration or whatnot just so I learn how to do things better in a way this is unnatural for me because I just tend to just put a bunch of paints out and just not really think about it and just do whatever I kind of feel works. But um, it doesn't always work. And I also just want to know what I'm doing. So I'm trying to like slow down when I'm doing color and think about it a little bit more. Just so um, if I have an idea, then I can think it through and actually plan it and actually know how to do it because right now I kind of do but I kind of don't so it's something I'm just trying to build a habit with with any illustrators like um, Dulac or Rackham, but they have this kind of like uh, often very limited palette and um, the ground color is almost like a tapestry. I don't know how to describe it exactly. I'll try to put some images up where it's just the, the colors of the characters are just coming out of the background so that um, it's not necessarily like realistic but it's kind of dreamy and um, I, I really like that kind of for a fairy tale kind of vibe it really works at least I like it and it's something that I would like to try try successfully this is not really what I envisioned in the end but um, it was an attempt and I also got good information on how 
how to go about it next time. A key part is that I need to go stronger with the ground color and I have to develop the background more so that when I'm layering the foreground details that can be sort of less and not so opaque. So I think in this case the, the background kind of texture is almost the most important thing. I used, um, a, I think it's a pilot pink lead in my um, pencil, in my mechanical pencil. And I like using pink leads, but I usually use um, the Prismacolor Color Race in rose. That's kind of my go to. I also use indigo and brown and a couple other colors when I find them, but uh, the rose is my, is my fave. And um, I found this pilot lead at an art shop a while back, and it's also kind of the same tone of pink. It's more like a pencil crayon, like it's more crumbly. It's not as hard. And I did not anticipate the fact that it was going to kind of melt when I put the watercolor on. So after I put that um, ground watercolor layer on, um, my lines were kind of gone. <laughs> so I had the shapes there, but the lines disappeared, which was kind of a bummer. And I could have redrawn them in, but I just wanted to keep working. And um, in the future, I just won't use that lead for this purpose, because um, if this was like a more of a loose painting, then it would have been fine. But when you're doing um, kind of cartoon characters. It's very precise in a way. And um, yeah, that was kind of like, I lost the features of the mouse and then it ended up being that I put his nose too low and blah, blah, blah. So um, yeah, just so you know, if you have the pink pilot mechanical pencil lead, uh, it'll disappear if you put water on it. It was slow going at the beginning of this painting um, and I was struggling a lot <laughs> and um, it took me quite some time to get my confidence back and it took me almost till the end until I was starting to have fun. It was honestly work. Um, but I got there in the end and by the time I started putting the lines in and details, my spirits were higher and I was starting to look forward to finishing and I was also starting to look forward to doing the next piece. So sometimes you just need a win and um, there's different ways to get there and this is just one suggestion to help you boost your confidence, to get you going again. And um, try this out uh, the next time that you were stuck in a funk. So my suggestion would be look for something old that you can redo or rework and work in a medium that you're comfortable with and familiar with and keep at it until you start having fun. If you have a great way of getting out of a funk, a great kind of little tactic that you use or uh, something that a friend told you, share it in the comments below. I'm sure other people would love to know and um, we all go through this so let's help each other out. Anyhow thank you for staying with me till the end 
if you enjoyed this content, I would love it if you would give me a thumbs up and uh, please subscribe if you want to stick around for the next one. Anyhow, thanks for staying. Thanks for watching and have a great day, everybody. See you at the next video. Bye-bye.